Hi, this is Fred. Today we're going to talk about three different types of common capacitors and their typical failure modes. Capacitors we'll be covering will be an electrolytic, a ceramic capacitor, and a tantalum capacitor. So let's begin. All right, let's start with electrolytic capacitors. This is an electrolytic capacitor here. This is a through-hole one, but typically you still see them mounted on uh, surface mount circuit boards. And I'm, I'm going to try to cover surface mount the most because that's the common types of circuit boards that we have today. I will show you an electrolytic that is uh, surface mount. It looks similar, uh, but this particular electrolytic here, you'll notice that um, this is filled with an electrolyte. So this particular electrolyte will dry out over time. So they don't have an infinite life. That's something to keep in mind about electrolytic capacitors. They can last easily 20 years or only even a year, depending if they're subjected to a lot of heat and other stress factors. And when they typically fail, the electrolyte either leaks a little bit out of the bottom here that I'm pointing at, and it comes out as a whitish substance or, or even corrodes copper a little bit and looks greenish and typically what also will happen is the electrolytic will heat and expand and if you want to call boil that it, it but it it ends up needing to vent and so that's what these little notches are this will dome so this piece here will dome when the capacitor fails so there are things that you want to look at vi visually they're the best indicators for failure of these capacitors just a visual inspection. So then testing wise, what will happen too, as they age, they'll lose their capacitance as well as their ESR impedance will go up to the po point where it's bad. And, and I'll cover this at the, uh, that at the end with what uh, ESR meters that I use, but ESR is the best reading to know the health of this capacitor and if it's bad or good. So that is an electrolytic. And that's how it fails. And we'll look at a, uh, we'll look right here at another one. And we'll look at this one. And I'm just going to go a little closer so you can see it. This particular one here, it's just, this is a surface mount electrolytic. And electrolytics are polarized. You'll notice this black line. But you'll notice that it's just, there's no through holes. It's actually mounted right on the surface. These are a bear to remove, so that's something to keep in mind. Usually you have to twist them out and just break them off and replace them. So that's a real negativity of these, but they are used and they are hard to get out. And there's you can you can't really heat an electrolytic with a hot air because it will it will explode because the get it'll create you know it'll expand and then that electrolyte will leak out because it is a liquid. So none of the electrolytics can be heated. And again, let's go back to this other electrolytic. And you'll see that this too has a, this particular one. And let me find it here. You'll see there's a stripe on it and that's the negative. So that's polarized too. So now let's move our way to a uh, tantalium capacitor, or I should say tantalum. I always pronounce that wrong, uh, which is a rare earth element. And let's grab one here. The tantalum capacitors are also polarized. You'll notice the plus side on this one. And <clears throat> this is what it looks like typically on a surface mount board. And typically how they fail is they'll typically go totally open and that's one of the ways that they do fail. There's like a little wire in there that connects it. And they will also lose capacitance. So therefore, ESR is a great test for this particular capacitor too. But any of the capacitors can fail catastrophically and explode or short. So that's not out of the question on any of the capacitors. It's just that we're talking about how capacitors typically fail. And that's how this typically fails then. Either the ESR goes up, meaning let's the capacitance goes down, or it just goes open. 
And so ESR is your best test for this particular one. Now we're going to move our way to ceramic capacitors. This is a ceramic capacitor. When you see this fail visually, you're going to see maybe a little crack on the surface here, tiny little hairline crack, or a little chip, or sometimes some even some discoloration. And if it fails catastrophically, it'll just be all burned up here. And maybe even scorch the whole board uh, if it's on a, a major power section. So that's how the capacitor fails. But typically, the failure is this tiny little crack or a little chip out of it. Because at some point, something overheated in one little section of that capacitor. One of the little plates. And that's basically, there's no uh, electrolyte or anything in these and they aren't polarized. So that's what I'll note on it. The best way to test these really is typically they short. So that's going to be the typical mode of failure for a ceramic capacitor is a short. So the only problem is when these are in parallel with other ceramic capacitors, it's really tough to find out which one shorted. And sometimes that calls for voltage injection, putting some low voltage, nothing higher than the board would ever, use anywhere else onto that capacitor limiting the current with a bench supply and putting it on that the area and whatever capacitor is failing is going to obviously get hot and then use a thermal camera to figure out which one so again the typical failure is a short on this that's something to keep in mind but visual inspection goes a long way on all the capacitors especially the ceramic capacitors these can be tested for esr and you notice they come in different sizes. This is a relatively big one, but then right next to it, there's some small ones that you can hardly see. So with the smaller ones, you'll definitely need a microscope to see if there's a visual crack on it, because those cracks are going to be really, really tiny. And actually in the bigger one, even though it's a bigger capacitor, the cracks can be really tiny too. So it's preferable that you use a microscope to actually clearly see the cracks. But again, you want to probably test this with a meter just to see if there's a short, but it can be tested with an ESR meter too. But typically, that's not something you would do, but you can test it with an ESR meter. That's pretty much all there is with capacitors. There are other types of capacitors, um, but these are, these are the most common capacitors that you'll run into in electronics. So let's move on to the testers that I use to test the ESR. All right, here's my two favorite meters that I use for ESR. The first one here is the Atlas ESR 70 Gold. I like this meter because it's just small and it's easy to use. So that's my favorite. And it's 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 not cheap, but it's, it's just a nice meter all around. Um, they have an Atlas ESR 70 Plus. I don't like that one because it uses some kind of proprietary 12-volt battery. Or something like that so it's some kind of proprietary battery the gold one i believe uses a triple a battery so that this i really like this meter now the other one that i use here and we'll do this first here this is the this is an lcr meter this is the de 5000 so this meter can do both inductance actually i should say all three inductance resistance and capacitance so this is a little more complex. And just to go into e what ESR is, it basically puts a frequency of one kilohertz across the capacitor. And when it does that, it's uh, within that frequency, it creates a, 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 like an equivalent series resistance. So it looks like a resistor to, to, to a lot of items. In fact, it isn't, but that's what it looks like because it, it exhibits a resistance. And that actually shows the health of the capacitor as well if it's going bad or not so so there's in different values on it and we'll get into that so let's look at the meter first now this particular meter as you can see we'll turn it on and i'll try to get this in focus as much as i can hopefully you see it pretty good and we'll hook it up to this 10 volt 10 microfarad capacitor here so i'll hook it up but before I hook it up, you notice this is on LCR mode, auto. So I'm going to put this on capacitive mode. 
So this meter is complex because it does a bunch of different things. So I'll switch it here. Now it says LP, CP. CP is capacitor. And then I'll go here. It's on D, Q, and then ESR. D, Q, ESR. So this now is a resistance up on this particular one, and this is the capacitance. So now I'll hook up the capacitor, and we'll check this capacitor. And again, this is a 10 microfad capacitor. So most capacitors, and this is a tantalum capacitor, and most capacitors here have a 10% tolerance. So that this, this could be 9,000 microfarads, and it still would be within a 10% tolerance. So a 9.5 microfarads is well within the 10% tolerance. And if you look, the, uh, the ESR impedance here is 0.36 ohms. So that's 0 0.36 ohms. And we're going to look at the chart. I'm going to switch over to that. And you're going to see that that's well within, within the range. So I'm going to switch here to window. And it, you're, you're looking at a chart here. And if we look at this chart, I'll move over here. And on this chart, we go across and we look at the 10 volt column. And then we go down to 10 volt column and look at 10 uh, microfarads. And you go across. Now there's nothing in that one. So we'll go to the next one and do 16 volts. And you can see that it says 4.9. So if you go across that, I'm, I don't know if my mouse is showing up here, but we go across here, it's 4.9. So that would be the maximum amount of ohms that should ever appear. So since we're at 0.35, and let's go back to this. So since we're at 0.35, we this is well within the range. And so this is a very good capacitor, even though it's actually really old. So the Tantalum capacitors can get very old. They're not like the electrolytics and anything necessarily to dry out. So that's that's this meter. It's a little complex, but it's really a good meter. I'm going to shut this off, and we're going to go to the other one. And I'm just going to show you how easy this one is to use. And let's hook it up here. Now this one says 9.75 microfarads. Again, 9.75 microfarads. And ESR 0 0.21 ohms. Again, it's well within it because like we said, it would have to be, for this to be bad, it would have to be 4.9 ohms or higher. So that's really it with this meter. This is nice. It has even a little bit of an audio feedback and everything, meaning it kind of gives you, if, if, it, if it's not hooked up right or it's turning on or off, it has different sounds for that. Just a really nice meter. Okay, one thing I wanted to point out with ESR testing is those meters can test in-circuit capacitance. And when they test in-circuit capacitance, typically power supplies have two capacitors along the way. Actually, more than even that. So you'll see capacitor, 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 capacitor. And so let's say each, we have two here that are 10 microfarads and you're testing it then you would get a reading really of 20 microfarads. Now, one of these could have a bad ESR, but the other one, since it's in parallel, would kind of give you a false reading that it would be good. And your meter would show 20 microfarads. And if this had a good ESR, that kind of throw off the whole thing. So when you have circuits in parallel, or I should say a capacitor in parallel, then your ESR testing becomes a little less accurate. And what it does is it puts a, lo a low frequency of about one kilohertz to ESR meter onto that circuit. And it's a really low voltage that doesn't trigger the electronics. It's usually below 0.7 volts not to trigger the electronics. And that it's a one kilohertz frequency, and that's how it tests the ESR across the capacitor. So that's how it works. So that's the reason why you're able to test it in circuit. But again, if they're in parallel like this, then... And likewise, if they're in parallel and this capacitor here that I just had is shorted, you won't know if it's this capacitor here 
that's the short or not. And if this is, let's say, some maybe a microprocessor circuit, and you don't, you know, you don't ever want to go and put voltage, but I I would end up doing voltage ejecting injection here, put some voltage across it. Let's say uh, in this case, if it went to a microprocessor circuit, I do 0.8 volts, and on a pinch supply and set an upper current limit. And if there's a short, uh, the the short of capacitor will get warm, and you can see that with a thermal camera. So that would be the easiest way to find the short of capacitor. So that's just some of the uh, things I wanted to point out. I hope you find this uh, video helpful, and if you do. I definitely would appreciate if you like and subscribe. Really helps me create content and keep it coming and know that you're liking it because there's no sense for me to create anything you don't like. So it's always much appreciated if you subscribe. Thanks a lot.